This is Piers Morgan Live. I want to talk to you about the Zimmerman case because sure. you've been right at the thick of big legal issues yep. like this. What do you think of the whole stand your ground debate that's raging now? Well, the, the, it's a good debate to have, and I'm not a fan at all of the stand your ground laws. I think that what they do is create almost an incentive to use force when it's not necessary. I think Eric Holder, although he's being attacked by the NRA and, and mm -hmm. many forces, of course, got it right in a speech the other day when he said, look, we have a doctrine of self-defense. We don't need to create a statute that says stand your ground even when you can rationally and reasonably retreat. There's been a lot of study about whether these laws in fact reduce crime. I think the best studies indicate they do not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what they do is encourage violence when we want to discourage it. Would you have prosecuted Zimmerman under second degree murder or manslaughter or not at all? Look, I, I think that, and, and I, I've heard your segments with Alan Dershowitz, who's an old friend and colleague. I, I was one of his students, and I have great respect for him. I think I begin with a premise here that, that, that it, uh, justice has not been served. Mm -hmm. An innocent young man was walking where he had every right to be and ended up being shot and killed. That something is wrong when there is no judicial response to that. Having said that, we need to come to grips with another reality. Unanimity, which is what we expect of juries in criminal cases, and proof beyond a reasonable doubt make it very difficult in a context like this where there's not overwhelming evidence to get a conviction. Now, murder two, I think, was the wrong charge. I just, as I understood the evidence and not have studied as much as some of your other guests, guests I think that was the wrong charge. Manslaughter, if they'd started with manslaughter, mm -hmm. maybe they would not. I always worry it as a prosecutor, if you overcharge, you lose credibility. All right, and if the jury rule out what you've gone for, it's harder for them to come down in correct, expectation. Correct. Right? It's, it's very hard because you're asking them to say, okay, I've argued A and B, reject A, but then embrace B. Mm -hmm. But they say, wait a minute, your credibility is already shot because A, which was your first and supposedly more powerful argument, it didn't work. So mm -hmm. I think the, and remember, the, initially there was no charge at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this was a murky, as powerful as the emotions are, and every right to be because of an innocent young man mm -hmm. shot dead. The, as a legal matter, it was always a tough case. I think they overreached a bit, and that probably hurt them. The other issue is the jury selection. And again, this is n not even a science. There's, I'm not even sure it's an art. But the jury selection, in retrospect, you begin to wonder whether the voir in the voir dire, they shouldn't have been able to tease out something about these jurors as prosecutors mm. that indicated almost a sympathy for the defendant and, and certainly maybe well, when you heard the, the juror who has spoken out talking about George this and yes, George right. that we didn't know much about Trayvon Martin but right. George 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 I, I found that very uncomfortable and, and seemed emotionally to be relating more to the defendant